In this video, Phil is going to show you how to take a tabular data set and create a pivoted cross-tab table in Power Query. It's a question we get asked regularly because the built-in pivot functionality in Power Query doesn't consolidate the data into a single row per item, but Phil has a method to achieve the desired result. Let's take a look. Starting with this table of data, this lists all the locations in my super mega global corporation and the departments at each location. As you can see, not every location has every type of department, but each location has at least one department. The goal here is to turn this table into this table. As Minda said, we'd normally tell you to leave the data in this tabular format as it's ideal for analysis with things like a pivot table or in Power BI. But if you want to create the final report in Power Query, then keep watching. This data is already in a table, so let's load it into Power Query. First thing I want to do is group the locations. So group by location, call the new column grouped. And the operation is I want all the rows, click OK. So each row in my grouped column contains a table showing all of the departments for that particular location. What I want to do is get that department column, get all those departments out and rotate them or transpose them into columns in this table. To do that, I can use the table.transpose function. And if you've ever transposed a table before from the menu here, you've used this function. Before I go any further, let's just look up how it works. I'm going to create a new query, a blank query, and this is going to give me a list of all the functions available in Power Query. I'm going to call it function ref and open up the advanced editor in the source step type hash shared. There's a list of all the functions. I'm going to convert that to a table, sort in ascending order, and then I'm going to filter for the function I want, which is table.transpose. And if I click beside function here, I'll get a description of the function. It says it makes columns in rows and rows into columns. Okay, well, we probably could figure that out for ourselves. But I don't want to transpose an entire table. I just want to transpose one column within a table. So how do I select a column within a table? I can use the table.selectColumns function. So let's see how that works. Let's just change our filter here. And table.selectColumns says it returns the table with only the specified columns. So if I supply a table to this function and then tell it which column I want, it will return only that column. I can then feed that into table.transpose to rotate just that column. So back in our main query, let's add a new column. And we want to transpose the table. So table.transpose. And we want to select just that one column from the table. So it's table dot select columns. So what are we selecting? Well, we're selecting from the table that's in the grouped column. And we have to supply the column name as a list. And the name of the column is department. So I click OK. We now have a table that contains just the departments for that location. Now, if I try to expand this table using this double headed arrow here, well, for a start, it's only given me three columns and we know that there are places that have more than three departments, Copenhagen, for instance. So let's try and load more. And it's now looked through the whole table and it's found the five columns in Copenhagen. So it's going to expand to five columns, but remember, Power Query will only give you a preview up to a thousand rows. So if your table is more than a thousand rows and you've got more than five columns, then you might run into an issue. But let's just go ahead and see what happens. So if I click OK, it's now expanded these tables in the grouped column. So for Brisbane, I've got finance, IT and logistics, and it's gone down each row and expanded those departments into their own columns. Now that's good, but you can see that the column names are hard coded in the query step. And this query step will only ever create five columns. So if you have more than five, you're going to run into a bit of an issue. Let's just close and load this and I'll show you what I mean. Only create a connection and let's add another row to our table here. Let's give Copenhagen a finance department. 
Now, if I go back to the query in the editor, you can see in my source step, it's loaded the new row, Copenhagen Finance, but in my last step where I've expanded the columns, I'm still only getting five departments, even though if you look at the table here in the groups column for Copenhagen, let's just drag that up. It is showing the new finance department that I just added. So the problem here is that the query step has hard coded the number of columns to expand. So how do we get around that? Well, let's look at the table.expand table column function just to try and understand what's happening here in this step. Let's go back to our function reference and let's look up this function table.expand table column. It expands tables in a given column into multiple rows and columns. Column names is used to select the columns to expand from the inner table. Now, if you notice the fourth argument here, the new column names is optional. So let's do away with that. Let's jump back to the query. And if I just look at the code here, you can see the first argument here is the table that we're working on, which is the added custom step. The next argument is the column, which is custom. And then the next argument are the columns that we're expanding. And the fourth and final argument is the new column names that we're giving in the table. Well, we've just seen that all of those names, the new names for the columns, these are optional, we don't need to supply them. So let's just get rid of them. And you can see this step still works perfectly well with the column names, just column one, two, three, four, and five. But we've still got the issue that the column names are hard coded. And more importantly, we've only got five of them. This isn't dynamic. To tell the step what column names to use and make it dynamic, so it'll work with any number of columns, I can use the table.columnNames function. Let's check that out in our function reference. And this function returns the column names in the table as a list of text. So I want to return the column names from the tables in this groups column here. So let's replace all of these hard coded column names with the function table dot column names. And which table are we going to use? Well, the steps already kind of telling us here because we want the column names from this table because the added custom step is returning a table. So let's grab the uh, columns from that. And we want the list of column names that are contained in the custom column that we created in that step. So click out of that and we get an error. It's telling me we cannot convert a value of type list to type table. So what's going on? Well, what I've changed is I've removed all the hard coded column names and I replaced it with this table.columnNames function. So I'm doing something wrong here. Let's try and understand what it is. I'm trying to get the column names from the custom column in the added custom step. So let's look at the added custom step and then in the custom column. Well, if we look in here, the custom column actually contains a load of tables. It doesn't contain one single table. So Power Query doesn't know what to do. I'm trying to tell it to grab a load of column names, but it's not sure which table to use. So we need to use one more function here, and that's table.combine. What that will do is combine all the tables in the custom column and give me a table that has unique column names. So back to our expanded custom step. And what I need to do is just wrap this in table.combine. Put my closing bracket down here. And there we go. So this step is now fully dynamic. It's grabbing the column names from the table that we create here. So we don't need to know how many departments we've got beforehand. And I can tidy this up now and get rid of the groups column. Don't need that anymore and we're left with the table that I want. So let's just review how this works. First of all, we're loading the table from the sheet. We're then grouping the departments by location, which gives us this column of tables. Then I need to grab the departments from these tables in the next step. And I'm transposing that column then in the expanded custom step, I'm grabbing all those columns and expanding them into their own columns and then just tidying up. 
There is another approach to this which uses text and list functions more so than the table functions. Let me duplicate this query. Just give it a new name, call it table2, which is really unique. And then I'm going to delete all the steps off to the grouped rows. First couple of steps are the same as the first method. We're loading the same source table and then we're grouping the rows by location. Next, I'm going to use text.combine to give me another column containing the departments from each location. If you want to look up text.combine, come into our function reference, delete that. So we're changing the filter to text.combine. And this returns the result of combining the list of text values into a single text value and an optional separator used in the final combined text may be specified. So in our second query, let's add a custom column and we want text.combine. And what are we combining? Well, we're combining things from the grouped column. And what exactly? We're combining the list of departments. So we want to put in here department for that column in the table. Click on OK. And we get a new column which has combined all our departments. So finance, IT, logistics here in the first row. But you can see I've forgotten to put in any delimiter. So let's just open up the step again, add a delimiter, comma, and we're going to use a comma as our delimiter. Now you might try splitting this column by delimiter. So let's try that, split column by delimiter. Delimiter is a comma. We're going to split at each occurrence of the delimiter in our advanced options. It's splitting into columns, correct? And it's trying to split it into only three columns. Well, I want that to be dynamic. I want it to split into as many columns as there are. So let's remove that, click OK. And it's split our column into two separate columns. So we're obviously missing a lot of information there. Let's just check out this step again. So in the advanced options, it's got the number two entered here. Power Query seems to want to have a hard coded number of columns here. Uh, as in the first approach though, we want it to be dynamic. We want it to be able to deal with as many columns as we give it. So how am I going to do that? Well, let's just check out the table.split column function first. Try and understand how that works. Go to our function ref and table.split column. Okay, so this splits the specified columns into a set of additional columns using the specified splitter function. What's important here is the fourth parameter. It says optional column names or number. So the fourth parameter, if you can tell this function how many columns you want to use, that's how many columns it will split into. So all I need to do is work out how many columns I want. Let's go back to the query. And if I look at the added custom step, so I can tell here in my first row for Brisbane, I've got three departments. So I need three columns for that, one for Sydney, so that four for Dublin and then five, well it's actually six, isn't it? Because we added a new row, six for Copenhagen. So I need to be able to tell the splitter function here, table.split column, that I need six columns, but obviously in a dynamic way. Well, one way to do this is just to count the number of commas that are in this custom column. With the added custom steps selected, add another custom column. Yes, I want to insert here. Let's call this count. Now, how am I going to count the number of commas? Well, it's going to have something to do with the length of the text string. So I'm going to start with text.length, but I only want the commas. So I'm going to use text.select. Now what text.select does is just pulls out the particular text or characters that you tell it to. So I want it to select commas from the custom column. And the second parameter is what I wanted to select, which is the commas. So I'm saying select all the commas from the custom column and then give me the length of that string or basically count the number of commas. So for every comma, you're going to have one more department. So if you have two commas, you should have three departments for four commas, five departments and so on. As you can see here, the count is out by one. So all I need to do is modify this step at one. And now I know that for Brisbane, we have three departments. Sydney has one, 
Dublin 4, and so on. Let's jump down to our split column by delimiter step. Remember that the fourth parameter for this table.split column function was either a list of the column names you want or the number of columns that you want. So I can replace this here, these two column names, with the largest number from the count column because I need at least six columns to uh, allow for Copenhagen. And how do I provide that number six? Well, remember again, table columns are lists. So I can use list.max to get that value six from the count column. And I need to tell list.max the table and the column name. So the table is, well, it's already in this step here. It's the added custom one table. And I needed to count the largest number from the count column. And as you can see, there are six columns provided dynamically. Now I can tidy up a little bit. Don't need that count column anymore. I don't need that grouped column anymore. And there is our final table. So let's just review what we've done here as well. As in the first query, the source is being loaded from the spreadsheet. We're grouping the rows within adding a custom column, which is concatenating or joining the departments using commas as separators. The next step then counts the number of commas and adds one, and that gives us the number of departments in each location. We're then splitting that column and we're feeding in the largest number from our count column using list.max, and then we're just tidying up. Okay, so there's two ways to pivot an unknown number of rows into columns. I hope you found this video helpful. You can download the file for this lesson from the link here. And if you like this video, please give it the thumbs up and subscribe to our channel for more. And why not share it with your friends who might also find it useful. Thanks for watching.